And you see it there, folks. Tonight we're digging into a move that surprised a lot of state leaders. Governor Stitt unveiling his new sports betting plan to bring more gaming to Oklahoma. But Fox 25's Peyton May tells us why many of those behind making this reality aren't so willing to gamble on his proposal. Is this the year Oklahoma gets sports betting across the finish line? Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> I would be. I would be so ecstatic. The governor has revealed his cards, rolling the dice on a plan for in-person sports betting run by the tribes and taxed at 15% and mobile sports betting taxed at a 20% rate. But not everyone is all in. Representative Ken Luttrell, a co-sponsor of the sports betting bill that's gained the most traction in the legislature, thinks that's way too high a price. I think it is. I feel it is. Uh, particularly when the tribes are out the, out the, the dollars to put those facilities into place to remodel their casinos, to, to add that in, to staff them, to train people. The in-person betting rate matches states like Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, and Virginia. The 20% mobile tax is in line with Tennessee, Massachusetts, and Ohio. I realize that the governor is looking at some of these other states and their percentages that the state reaps the benefits from, but other states aren't the same as Oklahoma, where, where all gaming is is regulated to the tribes to operate. Oklahoma's Indian Gaming Association tells Fox 25 the governor has, quote, not engaged in meaningful and respectful government-to-government -government discussion with the tribes. One of SIT's proposals, mobile betting anywhere in Oklahoma, issued by organizations licensed by the state, is also no dice for Representative Luttrell. But what he has proposed is, is clearly a violation of the compacts, which grant the exclusive rights for gaming to the tribes. He cannot take and spin off mobile sports betting to an outside entity and contract to do business between them and the state to provide mobile sports betting. While the governor laid out his plan, there has to be buy-in from the legislature in order for this to become law. The leaders of the House and Senate both confirmed they had no idea about his proposal, so the cards seem to be stacked against his plan so far. But the conversation is open. For Fox 25 News, I'm Peyton May. State Senator Bill Coleman also responding to the governor's call. He's the other author of House Bill 1027, which wanted to legalize sports betting in the state. Coleman says it's frustrating. The governor did not collaborate with folks who've been working on this important economic development issue and goes on to say the reason the bill stalled last session was a lack of coordination between the executive branch and tribal leaders. A Choctaw Nation Chief Gary Batten says the governor did not consult with the Choctaw Nation before announcing this proposal. Chief Batten released a statement saying, in part, upon initial review, we do not believe the plan represents the best interest for the people of Oklahoma or the tribal nations that have done so much to support the state. Now, the governor's plan would prohibit wagers on the individual performance of student athletes, coaches, referees, player injuries, and prop bets at the college level. Now, with that said, the governor actively awaiting input from the NCAA and athletic conferences that impact Oklahoma to see how they choose to regulate the industry. But a recent study by the NCAA shows rules like this have been violated time and time again. The National Collegiate Athletics Association says there's been a 175 sports betting violations since 2018, and there are 17 active investigations. Now, the numbers were included in a letter from the NCAA president in response to a request from a lawmaker, which does not list any specific schools or athletes. Legal betting has grown across the U.S. during the past five years, and the NCAA has strict rules against gambling by athletes. The letter, which was obtained by the Associated Press, says the violations ranged from $5 wage to providing inside information. Now, lawmakers and state leaders are touting the money sports betting can bring into the state. Financially, advocates sharing some concerns. We're asking if legalizing sports betting could make gambling disorders worse here in Oklahoma. And Fox 25's Tom Ferguson joining us live from the Capitol now. Tom, what have you found as far as an impact that this could have here? Well, Adam, we've been tracking the arguments in favor from lawmakers here at the Capitol. But one advocate I spoke with today says there could be a real cost if the state okays sports betting. According to the American Gaming Association, 36 states plus D.C. have legal sports betting available. The executive director of the Oklahoma Association of Problem Gambling and Gaming says they've seen increased need for services as a result. None of the organizations like myself or the state programs have been ready for what was getting ready to happen. Their helpline calls have tripled or quadrupled in that period of time. The need for treatment 
uh, doubles. According to Wiley Harwell, a 2022 OAPGG -G survey found 6.3% of Oklahoma adults had a gambling disorder. Another 23.5% showed one or more warning signs. 30% of the population is struggling with gambling to some degree in their life, which is about a million people in the state. That's almost unbelievable. Harwell says the disorders can be tough to treat because the client first has to admit gambling has a hold over his or her life. He also explained the disorders are tied to depression and thoughts of despair, even suicide. Well, if you compare the number of opportunities there are to gamble in Oklahoma versus the availability of help, we're the second highest risk state in the nation other than Nevada. According to Harwell, Oklahoma has about a million dollars set aside for treatment, but 143 casinos, a gap he wants to see close. He also wants to see strong guidelines in place, financial support for treatment, and mandatory participation in responsible gambling programs. And Harwell stressing the need of public awareness as critical, both of the problem itself and of the help available. The number at the bottom of your screen offers 24-7 confidential assistance. We'll also have more resources for those struggling posted on OKCFox.com. Live at the Capitol, Tom Ferguson, Fox 25 News. And right now, sports betting is legal in more than 30 states. That includes Kansas, Colorado, and Arkansas. Now, every state has their own rules on whether this is legal in person or online or even both. North Carolina, actually the most recent state to legalize sports betting back in June. And just last week, the North Carolina Sports Betting Committee approved the first set of gambling rules. If sports betting does become legal in our state, our rules could look pretty similar to what's in place there. Ned DiOrio with our sister station breaking down some of those laws for us here. In June of this year, Governor Cooper signed House Bill 347 into law. Tuesday, more clarification was given for online sports betting outlets as well as physical locations like kiosks and casinos. One specific point made was that the new rules separation from the operations of the state lottery. The new rules will apply to regulated sports betting and paramutual actors and not our current lottery retailers. Lottery operations fall outside this new rules manual. A total of 48 rules were presented to the committee. Eight retail locations and 12 online sports books are expected to start next year. These rules would apply to any applicant seeking a license from the commission, whether it be an ADW license or a license to be a sports betting operator, service provider, or supplier. The rules were approved by unanimous vote. The committee believes they're still on pace to have all outlets up and running by their deadline of June in 2024. Popular names like FanDuel, DraftKings, and Barstool Sportsbook are expected to make bids. A note towards customers that was made was that if you've gambled in other states, the process in North Carolina shouldn't be much different. These are foundational rules, including definitions, incorporation of rule industry standards, license and application rules, and rules regarding the written designation agreements for operators. That was Ed DiOrio reporting. Let's take a look at some of the most popular sports betting apps used in dozens of states out there. Experts at GamingToday.com narrowed down the apps to this list. The website says Caesar Sportsbook has the best loyalty program, BetMGM has the best mobile app experience, and Bet Rivers has the best sports-based profit boosts. According to Gaming Today, FanDuel, the best for new players, and Bet365 has the best variety of betting markets. Now, one name that you may not realize getting into this here is ESPN. Getting into sports betting with a $1.5 billion deal. It was an existing sports betting app that Penn Entertainment owns. will soon be rebranded as ESPN Bet. The deal includes exclusive rights to ESPN name for 10 years, and ESPN will get the rights worth about $500 million to buy Penn shares. Penn will operate the app. ESPN will promote it online and on broadcast. It's expected to launch on November 14th. And that's your big story breakdown. You can find more about the push to legalize sports betting on OKCFox.com. And if you missed any part of the big story breakdown, you'll find it all on our YouTube channel. Scan the QR code on your screen or search OKCFox.